All right. You can start, sister, anytime. Am I doing the opening prayer? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Most Heavenly Father, thank you for our gathering to come to expand our learning, to learn more in our journeys, open our hearts and minds, along with the company, with our mentors, teachers, guides. And most heavenly father, bless us and give us permission to open this lesson for this evening. We give you thanks and so be it. And so it is, let's see. Okay. All right, Mark, don't make me laugh, Mark. All right, can you hear me okay? Yes, all good. Okay. So this is the um, from Inner Transformation Lessons. This is um, the Peacemakers in Resolution. And initially when I got this, I, I thought it was interesting. Before I even read it, a lot of um, things came to, to my mind. Anyway, in, our, uh, in our common English usage, the word peace is often associated with the meaning of words like serenity, quietness, and tranquility. To understand the Beatitudes from the biblical perspective, we need to contemplate the meaning of the word shalom. In Hebrew, peace is not merely a negative state. It never means only the absence of trouble. Instead, it always means everything which makes for a person's highest good. When one individual says to another shalom, the speaker does not mean to wish for the other only the absence of evil things, but rather wishes for the other the presence of all good things. In the Bible as well, peace means not only freedom from all trouble, but also enjoyment of all that is good. Peacemaking is a far more encompassing term than it first appears to be, since it means everything which makes for an individual's highest good it is another more specific term for love, peace, and to love under any circumstances. It is not easy. And I was I was looking and um, the slide will come up when it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And um, that I contemplated and, and, and I read because I think it takes... Um, I don't want to use the word energy, but it takes a lot of um, soul searching in order for us to look at um, what peace means to us in a spiritual way, um, in your emotions, mentally, um, because I think our, our body language says a lot. So what comes out of our mouth and what we actually um, mean, sometimes it's there's a discrepancy there okay and that right there says blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of god and anybody can chime in when you want to those who go about their lives intentionally doing what they can to promote further and in every way bring about the highest good for others including individual <laughs> families nations and even the world may justly be called the children of god Jesus said a peacemaker is called a child of God for the simple reason that peacemaking is a fundamental aspect of the nature of God and thus it follows the peacemakers are doing the thing that reflects God's nature. The um, peacemaking aspects um, um, the unity, harmony, 
cooperation, communication, um, contact with another, with one another. And what came to mind um, with peacemakers, not only um, for, in, to me, in the apostles, um, in the Bible, but also in our current day, what came to me was um, Mother Teresa, Mahatma Gandhi, Cesar Chavez, Dr. King, because all of the energy that it took, um, the strength, the courage, the persistence, and putting up um, just the turning the other cheek and putting up with a lot of negativity. And I can only imagine uh, from their humanist in perspective how much um, that took for them internally to um, to do that. And I, I know that um, in looking at all of this, of course, um, from what I can tell, um, faith and and God being involved in and in all that they did, um, because I don't, I'm I'm sure they couldn't have done it alone. So, with those blessings, um, they set out to to do their mission. Okay, yeah, so they it's, had a great platform too, though. You know, they had a real huge platform to to communicate with people, a lot of followers. So that made it a lot easier. I think it would make it harder. <laughs> Wow. Because you, it, you have both sides of the coin. I mean, that's no secret, uh, you know, that the um, people that didn't like um, because of the justice and the changes and that always affects people. There's yeah. a help. That, and the other ones, that, I mean, obviously they did it for the. the yeah, but the ones the ones that were was, was was resentful, you know, they they were boisterous, but the but their their base was stronger. You know, they had a real strong base. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that um, that's why I'm saying it. the the harmony, the unity, all of these. Um, I think patience, all of the things that at least I have to work on. Um, it, it's there's a lot to be said for that. And, you know, God bless them, because I personally think that was a huge um, task and for their bravery to do that. All right. I would just comment one other thing. Um, sure. To remember that in um, in the book, Paul of Tarsus and mm -hmm. the other disciples mm -hmm. encountered the entire spectrum of resistance, support, apathy, mm -hmm. you know, militancy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rage and, and extreme anger and punishment to benevolence. They got mm -hmm. the entire spectrum. Yep. Just... Yep. No, yeah. yeah. And and th that's what it um, reminded me of. And because, you know, back in time, that time, it was obviously and people would get stoned and shunned and, um, and it was so so difficult i mean and even i could only imagine um uh in terms of their following of jesus and as the apostles i mean obviously it was harder at that time so but you're right all right and my next slide says as much depends on you live peace peaceably with all men um, there he is there he is. <laughs> there he is. Yep, you're right. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Mark. Let's see. Jesus' messages must have sounded odd to the people there. Those listening to Jesus that day were Jews struggling to live under the dominium of Rome. Many of them wanted to see Rome defeated and run out of their country. Most believe that the only way there would be peace in Israel was through hostility and so it shows that picture um right there of the hostility and i want to say that i don't think these days it's different when it comes to hostility um for different reasons 
um, <laughs> including the the January 6th that everybody keeps talking about. Yeah, I mean, this picture could be in Texas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in Texas. Yeah. The Texas Mexico board. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Mark. They have tunnels, not pets. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, the structure that was. Uh, <laughs> no, I know. But I missed something. What, it could be what in Texas? Well, I, I, looked, I looked at this border. picture and I said, well, this is look like Trump's wall. <laughs> the border. Oh. <laughs> and I said, uh, excuse me, Mark, they have tunnels now. Yeah, oh. far, more, far more effective tunnels. They use the tunnels, yeah. So. All right. Um, okay. Is that the next slide? Uh-huh. Oh. I'm sorry, that's the next slide. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. In 1968, a major newspaper reported that there have been 14,553 known wars from 36 BC to date. Wow. Since 1945, there have been over 70 wars and more than 200 significant outbreak of violence. From 1958 to present, over 100 nations have been involved in one way or another in armed conflicts of some kind. Um, you know, I'm wondering, conflicts, whatever it may be, I mean, violence, outbreak, um, violence encompasses a lot. I mean, um, it still encompasses not only, um, especially in our society now, not only um, people who are under the influence, um, who are mentally unstable. I mean, th there's a lot to be said, and then that ends up happening um, where, especially when they're not right in their mind, and tragedy happens, just like the Uvalde situation, where the, you said the young man had been seeking help and um, was mentally disturbed. And I don't know what anybody else knows about that information about that young man, but the effect, and it still has, um, that's going on that you read in the paper practically every day. So that's just my thought about that. It says, all right. All right, Mr. Mark. Why is peace one of the most significant words in our human vocabulary, yet it's one of the most elusive words in human experience? Anybody want to chime in with that? The peace begins within us. Oh. The answer is the human heart, the human, uh, the human heart. The human heart is the heart of the problem. I love the way that is said. As, as we always say, um, and Kiki, um, peace begins within ourselves. So if we can't have that peace within, then it's difficult to share with others. Mm -hmm. And then it says, uh, Albert Einstein is when, in one of his lectures in 1948, commented on the threat of nuclear warfare. And this is what he said. It is not a physical problem but an ethical one. What terrifies us is not the explosive force of the atomic bomb, but the power of the wickedness of the human heart. It's explosive power for evil. I think that in and of itself says a lot. There was, according to Ben Franklin, there was never a good war or a bad peace. I agree. Okay. <laughs> The other thing that I just wanted to add on this is that it's I'm not I'm not going to say that it's easy to keep the peace um, whenever we are working on ourselves, but especially to those people that you were just mentioning, like Gandhi and um, Dr. King and everyone, because they were fighting for justice. Mm -hmm. and the thing is, like, I I will be peaceful with all of those who surround me but the other thing is I actively work to I don't know to search for some um, justice but in a peaceful way and mm -hmm. I think that's brilliant there's so much for us to learn yeah which is exactly what um, he's saying here right I think was saying 
Yep. A, a good war or a bad peace. Yeah. Well, and um, it takes oh, one of the things I was um, reading. Well, maybe I'll save this to the end because it talks about how you get to that path of of the peace and all of the things that you could potentially follow. But I'm always a um, a believer of we have different experiences in different ways for different reasons, um, and everybody sees it differently. And I think in the beginning of the slide, that's what it said in terms of what peace meant to different people for different reasons. Did I read this? No. No. 13 virtue resolutions. Resolve to perform what you ought. Perform without fail what you resolve. Okay. Did we get that? Resolve to perform what you ought. So go ahead and do what you're going to do. And perform without fail what you resolve. So whatever you resolve, if you if if we're that's the whole point of being able to resolve. And I don't, I don't know what fail means. I think fail for each one of us is different. At least I can attest to that. But and that's in the resolution. Um, because I looked up or I was reading on both and I was like, well, to have a peacemaker or to be a peacemaker, you do have to resolve. And I especially think that all the, a lot of those resolutions have to be within your own self, if that makes sense. I, I uh, have done a speech based on the 13 virtues. And for this one, mm -hmm. uh, the equivalent statement I used was honor your commitments. When you make a commitment, you are resolving to perform what you ought. And then when you honor the commitment, you are performing without fail what you have resolved. Hmm. Oh, that's just a simple example. Maybe I'm thinking, I'm overthinking it. <laughs> Maybe I'm overthinking it. Well, I just, I mean, like I said, I just made it a, a simple example. Yeah, that's not, yeah. That's not the only example. Yeah, but simplicity helps us get it. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't quite get it, but that kind of makes sense to me, Mark. You know. Well, and you know what? And, and I think it's because um, as a helper, um, I don't ever use that word because I think it's a learning opportunity. So we don't fail. You learn from it. So it's a learning opportunity because I think it's a harsh, it's a harsh word. It's true. You know, it's true, but I think that um, uh, failure, I don't know. I just see each, each um, opportunity to learn something. I think that's when we fail is when you try something else and something different until you, something that works for you or others. I also think when you fail, you never, you don't get back up. You don't keep moving. You don't accept your failure that, or, or as a, a as a, a do over or a mistake or you know okay I learned something from that let me do it a different way you know you gotta like you're saying you gotta resolve it some kind of way the performance whatever it is so Mark made it really simple and mm -hmm. you know you get up and you just keep moving mm -hmm. you you know in the word failure in the American mindset of the last hundred years is often tied to sports competitions. And that's and, true. And so you have, you know, very famous, famous in history coaches that, you know, the phrase failure is not an option, you know. Um, but, but then there are the other coaches that that say you learn by losing. You don't learn by winning all the time. You learn by losing. What to do differently? Yeah, your game plan. Yeah. yeah, how to be better, how to be better prepared, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It doesn't matter what the sport is. Well, that you know, lawyers would tell you exactly the same thing. You got to lose a number of key trials to get better. Yeah. Now, doctors don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they'll get a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, in all seriousness, when you get. Um, that's people's lives or somebody's loved one. That yeah. that there's yeah. no room or place for that. So anyway, or or or, uh, or my all-time um, 
Michael Jordan. If, if, if you've ever seen some of his documentaries, um, it's interesting, but anyway. All right, um, the next slide is... Oh, sorry. That's all right. About you resolutions. Okay? Yeah. okay. Peacemaking is more complex, yeah, uh, and involved than it first appears to because it is intimately connected with the way we live our lives. Mm -hmm. It is called upon on constant determination, vigilance, and self-control. And I think this is, um, we were alluding, or I was alluding, trying to allude to that earlier um, because of um, our lives. Well, it's, it's, it's very connected to how you are able to or not, you know, when do you have peace? I think the, um, you know, in our minds and our heads, does the chatter ever stop? And, you know, what is it that you're feeding your own self? And can you, you know, even in, in um, I know when I was starting to learn to meditate, oh my, um, and not realizing how much uh, goes through, at least anyway, that went through my mind um, in terms of being all over the place. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think the self-control portion of it too, but it is a, I think that meditation is a very good way in terms of um, finding that, attempting to be vigilant of your thoughts and the self-control portion of it. Anyway, through our good resolutions, we create peace by drawing others to follow our example as they seek for the tranquility and pleasure that they perceive we have achieved as a result. Do we do uh, follow good examples, Regina? <laughs> for the tranquility and pleasures that they perceive is achieve a good result. What comes to my mind with that is um, when you're a mentor, and also, obviously, we're all human. And I think that there's, um, in how you perceive, um, again, the failure, um, if that's what you want to call it, or a learning opportunity, and or, um, and how you deal with it. How do you resolve something um, and think outside of the box? Isn't that how a lot of our, um, um, I want to say inventions, come about um, to try to um, help not just yourself and others, but it does take a lot of inner work and thought and all kinds of different things that we have to look within ourselves. Or is that just me that does that? Let's see. Peace can only be achieved when the involved parties resolve their problems and become friends. Conflicts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Why is it a joke? <laughs> because the, the parties and the, the governments, all governments all over the world, they don't want to have peace. Even if they wanted to have peace, they didn't let to make so much. Uh, the war toys for the children that they buy. In the kindergarten, they begin to play with the war toys. And how we can uh, stop it when they grow up. They like to play with the gun, with everything that belongs to the war. They And they make oh. the war. Yeah, that is that they don't want it. And uh, the most thing is uh, that the only way that we can bring peace is to make peace in everybody, to bring up the wisdom, the knowledge of the people. When all the people know and are against war, then no war will happen. But the people who make the, they have the company to make the, his uh, tanks and everything, they don't want to stop it. They want to sell, and you see when when the president comes, the, he's proud that I sold so many million uh, dollars uh, war toys, war uh, material to some countries. And how we can bring peace 
then we, we, we say that we want to fight for peace. We make war for peace. That is mm. impossible to make yeah. war for peace. And uh, they, you see the symbol that they made. Three guys are uh, hand up and the, the pigeon of peace is up and there. It means that they, they want to catch it and kill it and it's flying away from them. Mm. You see the symbol <laughs> that they try, that, that shows that the peace doesn't want to come to us because they is uh, scared from the people, from the uh, ruler that rule the uh, countries. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mohsen. And I think it, it here that you're right, the, the parties that are involved, you know, and say that even if you're in a classroom or with your spouse, I, I would think your significant other, your family, um, when there's problems, um, they're, they're the conflict in and of itself, you have to come um, to an agreement or either you agree to disagree in order for their um, to be some peace, um, but you do have to give part of your own self to be honest with yourself and to check in within yourself to see what it is that it's really bothering you. Um, you know, and if you can figure that out of what's really pushing your button and why, because sometimes it's just us, then I think you can have an open uh, conversation to be able to come to an agreement or at least calm down your feelings and not feel resentful or angry or whatever negative feelings that you have and be open about it. Anybody else have a comment? Okay. Well, all change starts within, basically. That's right. that's the whole point. And um, in trying not to control another human being in their lives. And that's, you know, partly what that issue is that Mosin was talking about is, you know, people trying to control mm -hmm. other people's lives when it starts from, it's an individual thing in this particular setting, you know, peace starts from our own heart. Yeah. Yep. It spreads out. Yep. Well, and I mean, the, I mean, if you're looking at two different countries, that's huge, but I think the concept in and of itself, or, you know, why, whether it's political or whatever it might be, it's still, um, I think it's still the same of what what is it? You know, why is it? So, and then different views. Well, we can't solve the world's problem, but we can help the, our own hearts become more peaceful. Well, that, that, that's true. That's the peace starts within ourselves. All right. It says, uh, instance, when, that's why we say, you say peace of mind, that is the only thing that we can have. And that is individual, as Ms. Sina said. That is, uh, everybody should have peace of mind because you cannot find any time that the world was in peace. Mm -hmm. the, the, from the birth, from uh, Adam, as, uh, as uh, the first people, they killed brother each other. Yeah. And uh, you know, only peace can be in individual. And when we uh, give them knowledge and wisdom that they know what means peace, and they are free, 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 free they have freedom in themselves, they won't fight with each other. And so more we have these people than yeah, less is the war and is the fighting. There is no fight and fly. This is the peace everywhere. They say, uh, the scientists, they say when 100 of the people, one person from 100 person, when they come together and pray for something, it will happen in the, and they uh, did it in New York. In, uh, they came with 400,000 uh, people in one place and they played uh, 15 days, and after that, the police said that 23% of the all kind of uh, violence was less in that month. 
You yeah, know? you're talking about the power of prayer. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The power yes. of prayer. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, you more, you more the people pray for something that will happen, and that is when they want really peace in themselves in the world that will happen. And mm -hmm. uh, not the, the people you see when the uh, people who make the war toys or war material they come together, they play too, but that is not for the it is they look for business. Mm. At any rate, the individual, as uh, Jimmy Sheena said, is important that they make peace. Everybody should be made for that. Do we have a day now for peace day? Say, say that again. Do we have a we day? have a day for peace? He's saying, yeah, oh. every day is supposed to be for peace. Let's work on it. That's why we oh. go together. We come together at six o'clock. Yeah. Train, well, love and that peace. is yes, that is what. But uh, as president days, as um, teachers days, as nurse days, do we have a Valentine's Day? Do we have a World, World Peace, peace Day? day is that what you, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I don't know when day you have one. <laughs> what day is it? For for us Muslim, we pray every day. We I don't know about solving all that right now. But yes. But I don't know. We'll look, yeah. into it. look at I'll, that. Look at that. I'll come. International Day of Peace, Wednesday, September, September 21st. 21st. It's coming up. <laughs> and, yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. uh -oh. You know the. Uh, uh -oh. in the... Wait a minute. <laughs> I lost, what happened? I lost the presentation. <laughs> oh, no. That's okay. That's okay. I have it on my iPad. No, no, no. I can get, get it back. back. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry, I don't want to disturb you. Okay. Okay, let me let me just <laughs> thank you for doing that, Mark. Though. What the heck? All right, let me let me just um, I think the the no, the it's word my, it's my he get just... it back. He's going back to get it, right, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. One we more, trust you. No. One we more, trust please. You. We we trust you. <laughs> oh, I see what I did. Uh -huh. oh, one moment, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Where'd it go? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that is sad. I'm sorry. You were quick about that to get on that Google and look it up. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Did you finish that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're we're on the um, we're on Gandhi. Gandhi, okay. A true peacemaker uses one's good resolution to become a force for positive change. Mahatma Gandhi once said, "We must become the change we wish to see in the world." Amen. And I we hear that very often. In fact, we say that within our group to be be the change you wish to see. Um, and also I attribute that to even parenting when you um uh, model and you parent and it's you know you can't say don't do this and do it <laughs> so so um anyway i think it's it's the peace portion of it for i think in different aspects oh it's right here that the the yeah there that yeah <laughs> there are three type of people the peace breakers, the peace fakers. I like that one. The peace faker and the peacemakers. Anybody have any comment about the peace fakers? Oh, we're gonna come across it anyway. Okay, a peace breaker are the people who go out of their way to break down relationships, thus causing trouble and division. That to me are the people, the the <laughs> the people that have um, a personality disorder. They're very known for this. And I'm sure all of us have known or know somebody with personality disorder, whether you're aware of it or not. Okay. There are those who, uh, who like deliberately confronting others and they have to disagree with everything and they don't like anything, but their motive is selfish. They are manipulative and self-seeking. Yep. Okay. All right, and they're the peace fakers. 
there are those who prefer peace over truth. Peace fakers see peace as simply the absence of any kind of argument or discord. They will go to any lengths or great lengths to avoid any type of conflict, confrontation, or unrest. In doing so, they settle for the counter fake peace that is being that is based on avoiding the real issue. Yes, and those definitely are um, referred to keeping the peace because they don't want to rock the boat and disrupt whether it's work or home or any sort of relationship. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of us have encountered a person this way, or we know a person like this. Okay, those are the peace speakers. We may have we may have a close friend whose life may be taking a bad turn and we avoid the issue and talk about more agreeable subjects. But when we do that, we may see our friend's life go down the drain. So instead of backing off and saying, sorry, I'll never mention this again, we would say, I don't care if you're going to, to be mad at me. I'm going to stay on your case because I'm concerned about your future, my friend. And I have to add to that. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. So in a lovingly way, because some people are more sensitive than others and take it wrong. Like your tone doesn't fit what you're trying to say. If that makes sense, too. All right. And this is the, the, the topic. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Okay. The, there, there are moments, circumstances, where... The soft and gentle approach <laughs> does not work. And yeah, then, and the sarcasm either. And then you must be far more direct. And your voice will necessarily change accordingly. <laughs> but you know, it when... when um, it doesn't mean kindness can't prevail. Right. But usually when there's, there's a disagreement or... When someone decides to do exactly what you did, there is a change in energy. Unless the other person's... <laughs> That's what's supposed to happen. Unless the other person... Then it's time to call it quits. Like, you know what? We need to resolve this another time or yeah. put it on or, the back burner. Or, 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 don't, don't. Don't, or don't say anything. <laughs> well, and you know what they say when you're arguing. Sometimes it's uh, people take it as silence as a form of consent. So you... <laughs> Anyway, that's a whole nother different thing. All right. Peacemakers are prepared to put others' well-being above their own need for comfort. They deal with real issues and don't avoid them. Peacemakers build bridges between people. Yes. Peacemakers are motivated by love, by real love. If there is any other motivation behind what one is doing or, or saying, then it is not acting as a peacemaker. It's a selfish act. You're doing it for self gain. All right. And then this is the, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. And I love, I love this prayer. Um, I remember I, I used to do it all the time in, uh, at the BSH Center. That's how I learned it. Okay. Do you want me to read it? Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hate, hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand and to love, and to be loved. I mean, and to be loved as to love. I know it the other way around, as to love as to be loved. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Pardon me? Amen. Oh, amen. Okay. All right. Next slide is, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And I love that picture. Peace, but a sword. Does anybody want to comment on that? Or how it, how you're, 
how you, I want to say practice or internalize. No. I think I think for me, sister, this is um, this is very much related to what we were just discussing a couple of slides ago. That it's it's not only worthy for you to just stay quiet as the fake uh, peacemakers, but <laughs> it's for you to make justice and to do the right things by saying in a kindly and a, in a lovely way. So it is to make the change that we want to see, but in a very lovely way. And I think it's interesting because when we care, when we truly care about the other person or when we truly treat things and people with love, we are hardly going to harm them. So I, I think that what happens is that not always we are truly loving something and therefore, I mean, I don't know, I, I, it's just like my, my thoughts, but it's just like things go out harsh whenever you're not caring too much love because when you are the chances for you not to be lovely you know like in the way that you are speaking are way lower does that make sense yeah and i think and i think um for me i know when i'm sort of looking at it and i saw the word excuse me um i did not come to bring peace but a sword and the thing what came to me was um not uh that Jesus wouldn't use a sword. You know what I mean? It's like, and then you look at the picture and it's like, oh, <clears throat> you know, you, you can visualize or see that that could be, but to come with peace. So that word in and of itself, but I understand what you're saying in terms of, um, you know, it's, it's, I want to use the word tough love. <laughs> yes. Can I, um, Sonia? Yes. It's yeah, so what I see is similar to Kiki in that, you know, the sword representing change. Mm -hmm. And I feel like comes to me is that idea that the law of the law of destruction precedes law of um, progress. And so, you know, that idea that, you know, you, you it's like the, the harvest, uh, the, um, um, what do you want, the, you know, when you're, uh, thinning the dead leaves of the tree, you know, it's that um, oh, the pruning? day of the wreckage to, to make room for the new, to, to make, yeah. So um, that's what I think of when I hear that statement from Jesus about, be, yeah, because I agree with you. We know that that's not coherent to think that Jesus is going to come and fight, you know, with a sword uh, <laughs> or for peace. We know that's, that doesn't make no, but sense. It's like those who use the door sword by die by the sword, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's just, um, I get it, not literally, but it's just, it was interesting to me. Um, oh, that was interesting to me. Yeah. So I think that's, I guess that's, that, that's my share on it. And mm -hmm. also the idea about, um, peace. I know when I was doing a study on the, you know, blessed are the afflictions, one of the spirit teachings says, you know, in in the world as we are today, we cannot experience absolute uh, peace and happiness, but we can experience a relative um, happiness. And they said that was in relation to peace of mind, which comes from a clear conscience. So. Um, so therefore, we see peace truly does begin with it. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So. I agree with you. And I think that, you know, in usually how, um, you know, sometimes when I pray, I say that um, we're in this school called Earth and, you know, we're going to keep coming back to you get it right. So, you know, part of the, the lessons that we encounter um, all of the time. So you know, the peace, everything that we have to learn um, before we get it right. And so, yeah, I think peace is, is first and foremost, and it does have to begin with us. And you do have to use, do your inner work in order for you to have inner transformation. And it doesn't happen overnight. So. Okay. May, may I say something? Yeah, of course. Okay. You know, when we hear the word for 
we think about killing somebody with that and fighting with sword to there. That is that Jesus means. Do you think Jesus, you know, when he came to the uh, temple and saw that the people in the temple, they make a, a business, they send uh-huh. them all out. Yes. Yeah. And that is his for what he is. It means that we shouldn't accept what is not true, what's not right. That is, we, sword is the word can be sword too, you know. That's the, the most uh, powerful sword because when uh, with sword you can heal very fast. But uh, with the words, when it hurts you, it stays long and long in you. And uh, the sword is the word and the, the message that Jesus brings to us. And that is the peace. That is the peace of mind, as Michael said, that is more important. You shouldn't mm-hmm. think that this word is something that to kill or to make fight with each other. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mark. It says, do not believe that my doctrine will be established peacefully. It will bring bloody, bloody bottles using my name as a pretext for humans will not have understood me or will not have wanted to understand me. Peace will follow war. Universal fraternity will follow sanctuary, no, sex, no sectarian <laughs> hatred. The light of faith will come after the darkness of fanaticism. All right. Weary yes. of a con- weary of a combat without result which has left only desolation in its wake and has brought trouble into the midst of families human beings will realize where their true interests lie regarding this world and the other amen to that so anybody have any comment in relation to that comment and i think that stop driving one one of the things that um in in this i think all of us have trouble some way or another somehow in our families or whatever it may be um and i think again if you argue with somebody or something happens and looking into what is what is the interest um that you might have um whether it's wherever it is and I think you got to check yourself with that and be honest with yourself about it. There is a sentence that we should think about that. That is very important. The mm-hmm. light of faith will come after the darkness of fanaticism. Mm-hmm. The most important thing that makes war is the fanaticism. And mm. in any religion or in the parties or anything, and uh, when we bring the people the knowledge, give them the knowledge to have the light of faith in themselves, they come out of the darkness and they don't make war. Thank you. You know, and, and having said that in, in terms of, you're right, you know, the light of faith will come after the darkness of fanaticism. And I think we all are aware that when there's different religions or different um, verses and interpretation of the Bible or whatever it might be, um, there are times to agree to disagree because there's different interpretations of that. But nonetheless, to me, it's still, um, you know, your faith and what you believe in. um, And, you know, how... I want to say, um, I don't want to say the word brainwash, but how you are able to believe what you hear and also... Um, the best really thing is to say, to keep the, in the darkness, to keep mm-hmm. the people in the darkness. Yeah. That is that, it. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is that you don't know you're in the darkness or you don't think you're in the darkness. I think that's the 
the whole thing about it. That is what Jesus says. We should know the truth, and the truth makes us free. There is only mm -hmm. one God, and they, all the prophets, all the people, they say we came from God. Then mm -hmm. it must be only one, and there is only one rule mm -hmm. in the world. And mm -hmm. uh, why we don't see that? Because uh, we close our eyes, and we are in the darkness. We cannot see the light. When we see the light, then we will be awake. And right now we are like dead, who we, we are walking, we are moving, but uh, we don't see the truth. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we have uh, two minutes, but what I was going to say was um, I've uh, encountered a lot of people who are uh, in the process of dying and they still, they still um, don't believe um, that there's another side or, you know, when you ask them, what do you think is going to happen to you when you pass? And that's just, that's it. That's the end of it, you know? So it's interesting for me to listen to different um, thoughts um, for people and their beliefs or their atheist or whatever it might be. I mean, I just listen because I, I like to process whatever's said and what their belief system and where that comes from. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not God or anything, just, you know, I, I think at that point, it's like, um, uh, call the chaplain. I don't know, <laughs> but, but um, it is interesting that people think this is it. There's nothing more. So, yeah. <laughs> the most important. I think when I think about Jesus bringing a sword, I just think about him just breaking up all the lies, all the, the craziness that's happening in this world. Like, um, it, 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 it reminds me of the insurrection, actually, and Donald Trump being the president. Oh God. It broke up a lot. It brought a lot out. You it know, did. a lot, of, it broke out a lot of things. And that, that, you know, puts me in that kind of mindset. Just break out, just crap and the lies just have to be cut, have to be seen, in other words, in order for everybody to make these changes. But like he's saying, all of this uh, um, this disruption and, and stuff will have at some point will force us all to come back together, you know. And it to me it reminds me of like even those floods that's happening in the south and carrying on. It makes these people more uh, open towards each other, more heartfelt towards each other because they're all experiencing these huge traumatic. Um, Destructions. Uh, yeah, you know that's that's earth shaking, you know. I mean, it just puts you in the heart and the mind of God. I mean, my goodness, you can't help but think about God. There's no, what, there's no atheists in foxholes or something like that. All right. Anybody, anybody else have a comment? No? I went kind of fast. You want to start over? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just blame it on Mark. He's the one that kept switching the slides. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> yeah. Was and, good, good job, Sonia. Oh gosh. Yeah, this, this was my favorite one out of all of these so far. For sure. Oh my god. You know, oh. Made it. Oh, uh -oh. Oh. you know what? I have yes. to say this. The the all of the the series of inner transformation um and when I was um in between working it kept in my mind in terms of, you know, you have to resolve things to make peace. So in my mind, I, I was going back and forth and I'm just like, well, you know, and then I thought of all these different things and I thought there's so much material for inner transformation. Like, I mean, obviously, and I think the time it really is yeah, that we have, you know, it's like you have to consolidate and it just seems like you just give a little piece of, uh, you know, whatever, even it's just, I want to say food for thought and that's well, a start and that's good yeah yeah we're just breaking the ice talking about it getting it going stirring up the pot <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. and, and some people some people um uh you know so i have to be honest sometimes um when people speak it's like well that's not my experience or you know um that or it's not 
that's not how I've been treated, whatever it might be. And that doesn't mean it's wrong. And I always remind myself, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's different. It's just a but different. But you got to understand too, each speaker is speaking from their own. Right. That's like what I'm experiences, saying. their own knowledge. And that's so, and, and so it's mean, meant for them, just like not, yours is meant for you. And so on, you know, each right. time we all do these presentations and stuff, it's, it's meant for us, you know? That's what I'm, that's what my point. It's like, it doesn't mean it's wrong. You might have a different mindset or different experience, but it doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means it's different. Right, and right. But we have to be open to with one another that, you know, Mark isn't always right. <laughs> 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 Only when he's on camera. <laughs> oh my god oh, I'm messing with Mark <laughs> messing with Mark oh messing my god with... Regina started it Mark yeah you're right pretty much <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta right. make him do the closing prayer cause he did cause he started it no he started it not me <laughs> So he has to do the closing prayer because he started it? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Is that true, Mark? Are you going to do the closing prayer? <sighs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Heavenly Father, yes. Stop laughing. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight and the opportunity to continue our progress, our education, our, deepen our understanding. We thank you for the free will to make these decisions and to be present. And we thank the spirits that guide this group and us individually. And we also thank the spirits who were there to learn alongside us tonight. Eternally grateful, Lord. Eternally grateful. And we humbly per request permission to close tonight's session. And so be it. And so it is. Thank okay. you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. That was, thank you, Mosin, for staying. Thank oh, you. thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sonia. Thank you, Mark. I like the, I like the discussion part. All right. Have a okay. good night. Good night. Thank you, Kiki, you can stop recording. <laughs> good night, everybody. I will, sister. Good Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, boy.